Welcome back to the deep dive. You're diving into some pretty complex stuff today. AI and uh, language models. Right. Specifically, this whole idea of model collapse. Okay. We'll be looking at whether AI is just very good at uh, plagiarism, right? as Noam Chomsky argues, mm -hmm. and unpack this fascinating comparison to inbreeding from Jensen. <laughs> yeah. Buckle up. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's uh, certainly a crucial conversation to be having right now, especially mm. with AI generated content becoming more and more common. Absolutely. So the scientific article you sent over dives right into model collapse. Yeah. It paints a picture of AI models basically getting trapped in an echo chamber of their own making. Is that right. is that an accurate way to put it? That's that's a great way to visualize it. Okay. Um, the article essentially argues that as AI models increasingly rely on content generated by other AI models for training data, mm. they can start to lose touch with the nuances of real human language. Funny. It's like you know, like a game of telephone where the information gets a little more distorted right. with each repetition. And that's where this idea of early versus late collapse comes in, right? Exactly. Early on, it's subtle. Imagine a language model losing its grasp on slang or regional dialects, right. those less frequent but colorful aspects of language. Okay. But in the later stages, the output becomes increasingly homogenous and repetitive, mm. almost like it's converging on a single simplified version of language. So it's like the AI equivalent of everyone sounding the same. Yes. Losing that unique individual voice. Yeah. And this research paper you included illustrates this in a pretty stark way. It does. They show how a language model's output degrades over generations when it's trained solely on its own output. Okay. What starts off as creative and interesting quickly descends into this jumbled, nonsensical mess of words. Which makes you wonder, how far off is that from what Noam Chomsky has been saying all along about AI? Right. He seems to think we're already well on our way to this AI-generated echo chamber. That's the core of his critique, isn't it? He argues these sophisticated models are essentially just plagiarism software. Okay. Very good at mimicking patterns from massive data sets, but not truly understanding the information like humans do. Which, if true, makes this whole model collapse scenario even more concerning. Yeah. If AI is already just mimicking, what happens when the data it learns from is increasingly synthetic, more artificial? Right. It raises some pretty fundamental questions about the future of AI. Mm -hmm. Is true understanding even possible without a deeper model of the world? Okay. Something beyond just recognizing patterns. It's a question that researchers are grappling with right now. And it seems like Jensen's analogy really hits at the heart of this dilemma, comparing model collapse to inbreeding in right. biological species. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'd never thought about it that way before, right. but it's a powerful comparison. It is, and quite relevant when you think about how AI models learn. In biological systems, uh. inbreeding leads to a loss of genetic diversity, making populations more vulnerable to disease or environmental changes. Mm -hmm. Jensen seems to be suggesting that a similar thing could happen with AI, that this constant training on its own output could create a kind of intellectual bottleneck, limiting its potential. So instead of this expansive, evolving intelligence, we end up with something more brittle, prone to the same flaws and limitations. Potentially, yes. If we're not careful, we could inadvertently be creating a monoculture of thought, even within AI. Okay, now that is a thought-provoking comparison. Right. It makes you wonder, what would a more biologically inspired approach to AI look like? Maybe one that embraces this idea of diversity as essential for growth and resilience. Well, there is a growing field known as neurosymbolic AI that's exploring this very concept. Okay. It aims to combine the statistical power of deep learning with the logical reasoning abilities of symbolic AI, mm. essentially creating hybrid systems that can learn from data and reason abstractly, much like the human brain. So taking the best of both worlds, yeah. the data crunching power with the ability to understand context and nuance. Exactly. But how feasible is that with our current technology? It's it's definitely still an emerging field. Okay. But there's there's a lot of excitement around its potential. Think of it this way. Deep learning is like having a super-powered calculator. Right. It can process massive amounts of data mm -hmm. and spot patterns we might miss. Right. But it doesn't inherently understand the data in a human sense. Right. It's just crunching numbers, essentially. Exactly. Symbolic AI, on the other hand... Yeah 
is more about logic and reasoning. Mm -hmm. It's the difference between recognizing a face in a crowd and knowing that person's life story, their motivations, their dreams. Right. Neurosymbolic AI aims to bridge that gap. Okay, so instead of just recognizing patterns, yeah. this hybrid approach would allow AI to understand the why behind the data. Exactly. That feels like a significant leap. It could be a game changer, especially regarding those uniquely human skills, like uh, like common sense reasoning and adapting to new situations. Those are things current AI systems still struggle with. It makes you wonder though, how do you even begin to build an AI that can grasp those more abstract concepts? Yeah. Concepts that even we as humans often struggle to define. That's the million dollar question. Right. Um, one approach is to look to the human brain itself for inspiration. Okay. Researchers are trying to model AI systems after the structure and function of our own neural networks. So it's almost like reverse engineering intelligence itself. Yeah. Which, if we loop back to Chomsky's critique, right. seems crucial. If AI is ever going to move beyond mimicry, it needs that foundational understanding, right? Precisely. And that might mean rethinking our entire approach to AI development. Okay. Instead of just focusing on bigger data sets and more processing power, mm. we might need to prioritize developing systems that can learn and reason more like humans do. Which takes us back to Jensen's argument. Yeah. If we're not careful, we risk creating this intellectually limited AI solely focused on optimizing for patterns it already knows. It's like, uh, it's like a hamster on a wheel running in circles but going nowhere. And just as inbreeding can lead to a host of problems in biological populations, this lack of diversity in AI could have its own set of consequences. Right. We could see a decline in creativity, an amplification of existing biases, even a decrease in the overall robustness and reliability of these systems. It paints a pretty stark picture. It does. And it makes you wonder, what does this all mean for us? Right the everyday users of AI? Why should we care about model collapse or neurosymbolic AI? It seems like a problem for the tech giants to worry about. It might seem that way, but the reality is AI is already woven into the fabric of our lives, Why? often in ways we don't even realize, from the recommendations you get on streaming services to the algorithms that shape your newsfeed. All right. AI is increasingly influencing how we experience the world. So this isn't just about the future of some abstract technology. Right. It's about the future of our culture, mm -hmm. our information ecosystem, even our own decision-making processes. Exactly. And that's why this conversation about model collapse and the need for more diverse, resilient AI is so important. Because ultimately, the future of AI is not something that will be decided for us. Mm. It's something we will create together. That's a powerful thought. So as we start to wrap this up, what's the one key takeaway you hope our listeners walk away with today? What's the message you want to leave them with? I think the the most important thing to remember is that AI is a reflection of ourselves, okay. of our values, our biases, and our aspirations. Right. If we want AI that's creative, adaptable, and aligned with human values, mm -hmm. we need to be mindful of the data we feed it, right. the questions we ask of it, okay. and the ways in which we choose to integrate it into our lives. There's a call to action then, isn't it? It is. We can't just passively consume whatever AI generates. Right. We have a responsibility to engage critically yeah. to question the outputs, to demand transparency, mm -hmm. and to advocate for AI development that prioritizes diversity and ethical considerations. Absolutely. And that engagement starts with awareness. Okay. With understanding the potential pitfalls like model collapse. Right. But also the potential solutions like neurosymbolic AI. Okay. The more informed we are, the better equipped we'll be to shape the future of this technology. It makes you wonder, though, what would a future shaped by this more biologically inspired AI actually look like? Right. What would be different? Imagine AI that doesn't just recognize patterns, but understands the nuances of context, mm. the subtleties of human emotion, right. the complexities of moral dilemmas. AI that could help us tackle some of humanity's biggest challenges, okay. from climate change to poverty. Right. Not by replacing human ingenuity, but by augmenting it. Okay. By helping us see solutions we might otherwise miss. It's a future where AI isn't just a tool for automation or optimization, yeah. but a partner in creativity and problem solving. Mm -hmm. A future where, instead of fearing the singularity, we embrace the possibilities mm. of a world where human and artificial intelligence collaborate to create something truly remarkable. Precisely. 
And that future is not some predetermined outcome. Right. But a choice we make with every line of code, mm. every data set, every interaction. So to our listener, we leave you with this. Right. Pay attention to the AI you encounter in your daily life. Yes. Ask questions about its origins, its limitations, its potential biases. Because the future of AI is not something to be predicted. Right. It's something to be created. Exactly. And that creation is a shared responsibility. It is. One that demands our attention, our critical thinking, and our unwavering commitment to building a future where AI empowers humanity rather than diminishes it. Well said. And who knows, maybe by learning from the mistakes of the past mm -hmm. and embracing the lessons of the natural world, right. we can cultivate an AI ecosystem that is as diverse, as resilient, and as awe-inspiring as the world around us. That's a great note to end on. Thanks for diving into this complex topic with us. Yeah. It's been an enlightening conversation. It certainly has. Until next time. And to our listeners, thank you for joining us on The Deep Dive. We'll be back soon with another fascinating exploration of the ideas shaping our world. Until then, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep diving deeper.